KDM 690 slash Husqvarna 701 Enduro versus the Yamaha Tenere 700. Is light always right? Today I'm going to compare the two and explain why I think light isn't necessarily always right. Stick around. I have owned both bikes and I have thousands of kilometers with each. Today we are taking a deep dive into these two motorcycles and see how they compare. And at the end of this video I will answer a few very interesting viewer questions as well. This comparison will consist of four parts. In part one, I will compare the hardware on two bikes. So engine to engine, suspension to suspension, brakes to brakes, and electronics to electronics. In part two of this comparison, I will compare the two bikes in use, road use, off-road use, highway use, and reliability. I didn't know where to put that. The reason why I've split road use and highway use will make sense when we talk about that. Part three of this comparison will be a sort of conclusion. And if you're looking at these two bikes as your possible next motorcycle, this is where you need to pay extra attention because I will try my best to explain where I think the 701 makes sense and where the T7 makes sense. And in part four of this comparison, I will answer your questions. One question from a Patreon supporter, they are prioritized. And if you want to become a part of an online community of like-minded people and get access to behind the scenes stuff and our online forum, check the description box below. I will also answer five questions from you guys about these two bikes. Before I move on, I just want to point out that yes, I am comparing apples to oranges here. One is a dual sport and the other is a heavy adventure bike. But I did try to adventurize my 701 as much as I could. I put on a Raid Garage Rally Tower, a very comfortable seat concept seat, and I also put on the Outback Motortech luggage rack to make it as roadworthy as possible. Let's kick this comparison off by comparing the two engines of these bikes, their hearts. The CP2 engine of the Yamaha Tenere 700 and the LC4 engine of the 701 Enduro. The LC4 engine is unique. It's the most powerful single cylinder on the market. It has both torque down low and it explodes in the mid to upper range. And I really mean explodes. And since it is a thumper, it contributes to the low weight of the 701 Enduro. And I really like the LC4 engine, but this is a comparison. I am comparing the two and I have to tell you which one I enjoyed the most even though I enjoy both a lot. And the CP2 engine of the T7, while it's not as unique as the LC4, I do like this one a bit more. I've said it in the past, this is my favorite engine. And I understand that I sound like your typical motorcycle journalist saying this, but it's because of the user-friendly power delivery. And the reason why the CP2 engine is so great is a combination of things. First and foremost, it is almost impossible to stall. I can start this bike in fourth gear, just give it throttle and feather the clutch, no issues at all. The second thing I like about the CP2 engine is the throttle response. The LC4 engine is not jerky in itself. It is a thumper, so it has different characteristics from this parallel twin, but still, the 701 and the 690, they are both very plagued by all the Euro 5 emission regulations. And as you probably know, that was one of my biggest pet peeves with that bike, how jerky the throttle response was in the closed loop. The third thing that I like about the CP2 engine is how it delivers its power, power delivery. It is as linear as linear can be. Nowhere in the rev range will this bike lose power or explode. Whereas the LC4, it spools up faster, not necessarily a negative thing, but for a beginner or an average rider, having a predictable power delivery is very user-friendly. 
So while I do favor the CP2 engine in the T7, in my opinion the LC4 in the 690 and the 701 is much more unique. There's two things that made the difference for me. Everything about the user friendliness of the CP2 engine, it's not like the 701 is not user friendly, don't get me wrong, but still this one is more user friendly. And the second thing is the known reliability of the CP2 engine. More about reliability in just a second. Next up in this comparison is the suspension. And before I even try to unravel the mystery that is suspension, I have to point out that there is a big weight difference between these two bikes. The T7 is about 200 kilograms wet and the 701 is around 155. So we are talking about a 50 kilogram weight difference and that will have a massive impact on how the suspension performs on these two bikes. And this is where I have to be completely honest and point out that I am not able as a rider to push the suspension on either bike to its limit like your typical motorcycle journalist. I am an average rider at best. But still, in my experience, the suspension on the T7 is more for relaxed adventure riding. It's a bit plusher than the 701. After I put springs on for my weight, I'm heavier than your average Joe. Whereas the 701, it feels a bit harsh when you're just covering distance on gravel. But as soon as I start to ride a bit faster, again, not very fast, but as an average rider a bit faster, the 701 suspension, the WP Explore package, was just miles ahead of what comes stock on the T7. When I ride this bike and I see uh, a pothole or a little jump, I have to brace myself for the impact because I know what will happen. I will plow through the stroke with my weight on this bike and I will get that cringe feeling that you have to brace yourself for the impact. Whereas the 701, even though the springs were stuck, I could just ride straight through it and not have to worry at all. And to summarize the suspension comparison, the WP Explore package on the 701 is miles ahead when it comes to spirited and aggressive off-road riding. Whereas the suspension on the T7 is ever so slightly more comfortable on the tarmac. And when it comes to comparing the brakes on these two bikes, this will be the shortest hardware comparison in this video. And I think this is best told with a story. When I picked up my T7 after selling the 701, I almost crashed in the car in front of me coming to a red light. Just like with suspension, the weight difference will have an impact. There's less mass to slow down on the 701, but at the same time I have ridden several other middleweight adventure bikes and they all have much better brakes than the T7. I consider the brakes on the T7 adequate once you get used to them and the brake pads starts to wear in. But again, the brakes on the 701 is much, much stronger and better. Last comparison before we move on to how they are in use. Let's compare the technology on these two bikes. The 701 comes with a quick shifter, it comes with a two stage traction control, it comes with engine power modes. It comes with sophisticated lean sensitive ABS, whereas the T7 Oh yeah, it has ABS, which by the way is much worse than what comes on the 701. Let's talk a bit about the technology on the 701 and why I'm not a fan. But hear me out. The quick shifter, it worked really really well and I know a lot of people who likes it. Wide open throttle and just banging through the gears on a 701, hilarious. The traction control on the 701 works really well and I think every one of us, every single one of us is faster around a course if we use the sophisticated traction control on the 701. The ABS worked really well, you can turn it off or have it on on the front and turn it off in the rear, which you cannot do on the T7. So the technology on the 701, it all works really well. The reason why I'm not a fan is simply because I end up not using that. So I'd rather, just like I said in my 1000 kilometer review of the 701 about a year ago, 
I'd rather pay less for the bike up front and not have the technology. And that is one of the things that I like about the T7. There's no technology. It's not that I'm anti-tech. I have no reason to be. I like technology. The quick shift organic it worked really well, but I just didn't use it. And I, I'm more frugal. I know it doesn't make sense because I have this brand new bike and I just ordered another, but I don't want to spend money on things that I don't use. Summarizing the tech packages on these bikes, there's a clear winner because this bike doesn't have any besides the not very sophisticated ABS. So if you're a tech interested guy or tech oriented rider, you will really like what you can find on the 701. With the hardware that makes up these two bikes compared, let's look at how it is to actually use these bikes, which is the most important thing. And when it comes to road riding, it is not that the T7 is bad or boring. It's just that the 701 is so hilariously fun to ride on the road. And when I say road, I mean pretty much everything besides highway riding. City riding, twisty back roads, country roads, anything that is on tarmac besides highway. The 701 is very quick off the line. It has great brakes, it is responsive, it's flickable through traffic. It is just a lot of fun to ride. Isn't the reason why we're riding in the first place to have fun? And every time I rode the 701 on tarmac, I had a huge grin on my face. It is a phenomenal bike on the road. And I've said this a thousand times by now. I really understand why the 690 and 701 is a popular supermoto platform because that engine in that chassis is just mm, a lot of fun. The T7 will get you from A to B in comfort, whereas the 701 will get you from A to B, but you stopped by C and D as well because you just didn't want to arrive at your destination. When it comes to comparing these two bikes for off-road use, I want to split off-road riding into two categories. We have the less technical kind of off-road riding, you know, your typical nicely packed gravel or dirt road, whereas the more technical side is your mud, sand, gravel roads but with a lot of corners or loose gravel because when it comes to the easy kind of off-road riding the difference between the t7 and the 701 is surprisingly little i can ride almost as fast on a course with the t7 as i could on the 701 even though this is much heavier but when it starts to be more technical or a lot of corners on gravel the 701 really shines because it's much less weight, so it's easier to slow down before the corner, it's easier to corner, and it's quicker out of the corner. And when it comes to looser stuff like mud or sand, the 701 is just much easier to handle than the T7. I cannot talk about the T7 in a technical off-road sense without mentioning its weight, but more importantly how it carries its weight. This bike is notoriously top-heavy. The engine is not necessarily tall, as many say, it's more that it's mounted high up in the frame and on top of the engine again is the fuel tank. And this bike, when riding off-road, technical slow pace stuff, and you come to a stop, this bike will come crashing down very, very fast. And the saying, weight is king for off-road riding, is very accurate in this situation. The 701 is just miles ahead of this bike, so for technical, or more active off-road riding, the 701 is truly amazing. And just like the 701 is the more fun bike on twisted back roads and a much higher performing bike on technical off-road riding, the T7 is a much more comfortable bike on the highway. And in hindsight, it's easy to say, well, obviously they're two different kinds of bikes with different kind of use. But I was honestly surprised at how much more comfortable the T7 was on the highway. And that ultimately ended up being a deciding factor for my bike choice. And there's a lot of different factors that comes into play when we're looking at highway comfort. Things like weather protection, wind protection, the angle of the forks, the rake, etc. But there is one factor that I honestly didn't think about when I bought the 701. And this is important for you guys who owns a dual sport 
and is looking at the bigger dual sport or the lightweight adventure bikes. I get questions from people saying, I have a 300L, I'm looking at the 701 because I want the extra power on the highway. And while that extra power will make it better on the highway, I still think there's one factor that we need to think about for highway comfort. And that is the total weight of the bike. Again, I didn't think about this when I bought my 701, but now that I have more experience with different bikes, this makes all the sense in the world. It's very easy to think that it's the power of the engine that makes the most difference for highway riding. But my DRZ and the 300L, bikes that are considered to be less powerful than your typical adventure bike, they are perfectly happy to ride at 110 kilometers on the highway. So ultimately, in my experience, it is the weight of your bike that makes the most difference for highway comfort. The heavier the bike, the more stable it will be going in a straight line and it will be less affected by wind from passing traffic or crosswinds. To summarize this highway comparison between the T7 and the 701, or an adventure bike and a dual sport, the T7 is like a gold wing. After riding on the highway on my Husky 701, I would arrive at my destination completely worn out from fighting the wind, whereas the T7 again is a much more comfortable place to be. All right, so we have covered the hardware that makes up these two bikes. We have compared those and we've also compared the two bikes in use on the road, off road and on the highway. The final thing that I want to talk about before I move on to, yeah, trying to help out which bike is right for you. If you are looking at these two, I want to talk about reliability. And I'm not going to talk about the reliability of these bikes for all the riders, just in my own experience. This is the second T7 that I own. Across these two T7s, I have around, I would say, 15,000 kilometers, give or take. And on my 701 before I sold it, I had 7,000 kilometers, I think. On my T7s, I've never had a single issue, nothing that broke or didn't work. On my 701, Unfortunately, because I really wanted that bike to be something I could prove to the people who just without reason say KDMs are unreliable or Huskies are bad because I heard this from my neighbor's cat or whatever. Unfortunately, my 701's LC4 engine started to leak some oil on the right side by the water pump cover. Not a huge deal. But still, I had to get it fixed. It got fixed under warranty, but my bike was left at the dealer for a bit over, I think it was two months actually, waiting for a part. And uh, yeah, not a, not a very reassuring thing. Again, it's not a deal breaker. I didn't sell the bike because of that. But it leaves a little scar in the back of my mind when the one KDM slash Husky that I have owned started to leak oil within 7,000 kilometers. That's all I want to say about reliability. And I hope that if you ride a 701 out there, I hope it's rock solid and it works really well for you. All right, let's talk about which of these two bikes are right for you. And I want to introduce this chapter by paraphrasing a dear friend of mine, Bill White from Australia. He recently left a comment on any of my videos and he said something in the lines of when choosing a bike take a long hard look at how you ride and how you want to ride and then decide which bike is right for you this is where i went wrong with the 701 and no i am not standing here justifying why i sold a bike and bought another this is very useful because i bought the 701 for the wrong reason I bought a bike that is perfect if you live in Portugal or in Australia where you have trails everywhere. But I live in Norway and we do not have legal trails everywhere. But I just, in my mind, I wanted that bike to be the perfect unicorn lightweight adventure motorcycle that I could travel the world on. Turns out that I cover a lot of tarmac on a daily basis commuting to work next year i'm going to ride down to the pyrenees either on a gs or this t7 and i wouldn't have done that on the 701 because the 701 is not comfortable enough 
to sit on the highway for hours on end. And like I said, when I compare these two bikes for highway use, I avoid highways at all costs. But the distances that I have to cover to get to Sweden or to Spain or wherever in Europe, they are so long that I need a machine that can in somewhat comfort take me there. And that is the main reason why I ended up selling my 701. And if it was slightly more comfortable on the highway, I would still have the 701 in front of me today. So if you are looking at any of these two bikes, you have to think long and hard how you ride, how you think you'll ride in the future. Yes, that may change, but still think about it before deciding. Now let's take a closer look at two scenarios where I think these two bikes makes perfect sense. There is simply way too many personal factors that I cannot take into consideration. Some will not settle for a bike that is less comfortable than a GS, while others are perfectly happy riding the FE350 around like a dual sport. So there's a lot of personal things that I cannot take into consideration, but I have boiled this down to a few things that I think is of huge importance when deciding what kind of bike is right for you. Number one, trail availability. And what I mean by that, how many trails do you have locally where you live, where you usually ride, right? On a daily basis, do you have to cover three hours of tarmac to get to the nearest trail? Or do you have trails straight outside of your house? The next thing that you have to consider is how those trails are, the difficulty of them, the ones that you have local to you. Are they nicely packed gravel roads like the ones that I have? Or is it single track or two track or technical stuff? If you consider these two things, you will have a very good direction to take. Do you have trails straight outside your door or at most 30 minutes of riding to get there? And those trails are very technical then I think you should lean towards the 701 or something lighter, PR7, 690, DR650, DRZ, the list goes on. If you, however, like me, have around 45 minutes to get to the trails and the trails that we do have here where I live in southern Norway, legally at least, are nicely packed gravel roads, almost like riding on tarmac, there is no reason to ride around on a dual sport like the 701. I am perfectly happy on the T7 because I can get there in comfort and it's a very good gravel machine as well. And like I said when I rode in Portugal, if I lived somewhere where trails were as available as in Portugal, I would not have sold my 701. And it is when we are talking about the trails that you have local to you and their availability, what I introduced this video comes into play. Light doesn't necessarily always mean right. Because the trails that I have are far away and they are very easy to ride, I don't have to ride them on a very light bike. I could be perfectly happy with a GS as well. The third thing that you have to consider is how you intend to ride when you are riding away from your home? Will you take on long adventure trips down into Europe like I am next summer? Or are those trips in your future just local rides to a lake where you camp and you fish? Perhaps a 701 makes more sense. And the fourth and final thing that I think is important in this equation, after looking at the three things that I said initially, how good of a rider are you? Try to be honest with yourself. If you are just starting out, even though you don't have that many trails available to you, I don't think a heavy adventure bike is the best place to start. That is why I sold this T7 in the beginning. I evaluated my situation and I just realized that even though I ride on gravel at most, the T7 was still too heavy for me. So I went to the DRZ and the 701 and as soon as I became a better rider where I could handle something like the T7 on gravel road, on two tracks and some single track. I'm now back on a bigger adventure bike when all things are considered. Boy, that was a lot of talking, 25 minutes of motorcycle comparing. But let me know if you enjoyed that. I most certainly did. Let's jump straight into the questions of today. First question comes from a Patreon supporter. Thank you very much for your support and your question, my dear friend. And Alexander asks, 
what would you say is the biggest difference when it comes to money when building these bikes? Is it cheaper to kit the T7 for off-road use or the 701 for road use? All right, so I want to start off by saying, and it's a very good question, no matter what you do to the 701, it will never be as comfortable on the road as the T7 and vice versa. No matter what you do to the T7, it will never be as off-road worthy as the 701. Pretty obvious, but still that is the groundwork for this answer. So with my 701, I did pretty much everything you need to do to make it as off-road, sorry, as road-worthy as possible. I put on the Raid Garage Rally Tower, so it's a big windshield to protect me from the elements and wind. Uh, I put on a much more comfortable seat concept seat, so it's a more comfortable place to sit. The only thing I didn't put on was a bigger fuel tank to make it um, yeah, long distance worthy. Uh, I was about to, but uh, I started questioning what I'm really doing with that bike. And when we say road wor uh, worthiness uh, for the 701, I really mean highway use. As I said in the comparison, it is a great road bike, but highway is, um, although I don't like it, as I said, it is still a necessary evil when it comes to adventure riding, because if you want to cover long distances, you, you need to ride on the highway unless you have six months that you can be a, a big gun for on a big trip. With the T7, the two only things that you really need to make it off-road worthy, in my opinion, is better tires than the stock Pirelli STRs and springs for your weight for the suspension. Ideally, you want better suspension like a revalve or aftermarket parts, but if you want to make it as cheap as possible, springs for your weight will be sufficient. So it is cheaper to kit the T7 for off-road use than it is to kit the 701 for road use. But no matter what you do to neither of these bikes, the T7 will never be as good as the 701 for off-road use, just like the 701 will never be as comfortable on the highway as the T7. So you really need to ask yourself, what do I need my bike for? How will I ride? Just like I said in comparison, what is your intended use with your given motorcycle? And that is why the 701 didn't, yeah, didn't cut it for my use, because I travel long distances on highway. Thank you very much for a great question, my dear friend, and thank you very much for your support. Next question comes from Antonio Suarez, and he is asking how I would compare the PR7 in between the 701 and the T7. And the PR7 is so similar to the 701 that I'm not going to compare the PR7 to the T7, but I want to compare the PR7 to the 701. Those are two very similar bikes, but in my experience, Remember, my experience with the PR7 was quite limited. It was only a couple of days, uh, perhaps in total four hours uh, of off-road riding. The PR7 feels ever so slightly more like an adventure bike than the 701. The 701 has this strange thing to it. Let me explain. The front end feels a bit low. It feels like you, you, you need to go faster. The engine doesn't like to be kept in a certain speed, it always wants to go faster. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it's not as laid back to ride if you're just, yeah, adventure riding, laid back adventure riding, exploring a trail or a new place. The PR7 feels more like an adventure bike, the handlebars are taller, the engine is happier at lower RPMs. So. The 701 feels more, more like a race bike, if that makes sense, whereas the PR7, while it's still absolutely happy to be raced uh, at the extent that I can race any bike, but it feels more like an adventure bike. It is more relaxed in its stance, the, the geometry and ergonomics more relaxed, laid back. There's two things that I like more about the PR7 than on the 701, and that is the suspension and the throttle response. It is less jerky on the PR7. But the 701 has a much stronger engine. It is significantly stronger. I think it's around 20 horsepower, if I'm not completely mistaken. Thank you for your question. The next question comes from Urban Adventurer, and he is asking a simple question. Which have you had, or do you expect to have more fun on, and why? And that is a very good question. And it's easy to get caught up in all the details and comparing this and that, and always thinking about what's optimal for 
a given situation. But when it comes to adventure riding, it's mostly about fun, isn't it? I think this question is quite simple to answer. I had the most fun on the 701. It's not like the TSM is boring or I'm not enjoying myself, but the 701 is... It has this aura about it, like I said in the previous question. It wants me to go faster, like in the riding experience on the 701 is better than the T7. The T7 is more like, it, it tells me to enjoy the scenery and nature. It's a fun bike to ride, don't get me wrong, but the 701 has this thing about it that it's just, yeah, I just, uh, it was always challenging me. Go a bit faster, Johannes. Take this corner a bit faster. Or do this or do that. Uh, yeah, it's hard to explain, but um, I think the 701 is the most fun bike to ride between the T7 and the 701. But I expect to have more fun on the T7. That is simply because I've sold my 701, so it's not possible to have more fun on it. Whereas the T7 is my long-term adventure bike. Thank you very much for your great question. Next question comes from Sahid Hussain, and he is asking, what about vibration? Is it too bad on the 701? And the reason why I didn't talk about vibrations in the original video is because I knew this question would come. I don't think the 701 vibrates too much when all things are considered. Yes, it's more vibey than the T7, but a thumper will always be. And imagine the piston going up and down inside that huge single cylinder engine. One would think that it would produce a lot of movement and vibrations. Again, it will never be as refined and less vibrational than any twin cylinder engine, but I think it is a very refined engine and the, the vibrations on the 701 did never really bother me. That is, however, in my experience. I know some will say that a GS is too vibrational, where in my opinion it's like riding a car. So it depends on what you're used to. But all things considered, I don't think the vibrations in the 701 were too bad at all. Thank you for your question. Next question comes from Peter Azalas and he is asking, is it worth doing the more rally conversion on the 701 or is it better to just buy an adventure bike instead? And this question is similar to the first one from Alexander where we looked at the cost of making the 701 roadworthy and the cost of making the T7 off-road worthy. Now, Peter, I think this depends, like I said in the video, where you live, are your trails uh, technical? Are they easy to ride? How is the availability? How do you intend to use the bike in your future? My answer to this question, based on where I live, would be different if I lived in another place, right? Uh, so you need to analyze your own situation. But in my experience, however, since you're directing this question to me, I think in most situations, I think it's better to buy an adventure bike up front because we are adventure riders, right? And we do cover road, highway to get to the trails. Uh, we meet up with the guys and head to another country and ride. And being the one on the dual sport, it's... Um, it's tiring to sit on the highway when the other guys on their big GS's or the T7's or 890's, they want to ride the highway to get there. I think, I think it's best to buy an adventure bike up front, unless you are into rally riding or you're a really off-road oriented guy with a lot of trails where you live. And like I also said in the video, it depends on your experience as a rider or your rider skill. If you're a complete beginner, it doesn't look like that based on your question. Uh, I would always say get the lighter bike, forget the highway things, get the lighter bike and practice with that bike. But if you know how to handle a, a bigger adventure bike in off-road situations, I think an adventure bike is clever based on the money you have to pay to make the 701 rally worthy, but also just the riding in general. Thank you very much for your question, Peter. Fifth and final question comes from Jorge RD. Uh, what would each bike need to become the unicorn adventure bike? I feel like the 701 was just a wide ratio gearbox and price reduction away from it. What about the T7? It's a good question. I think we've covered this to a certain degree already. Uh, but talking about the gearbox, uh, personally, I, I found the gearbox to be okay. It's it's crisp in, in gearing and... The spacing, yes, it could have been spaced further apart, um, one to five, 
but again I didn't I didn't find it to be that much of an issue but I do think the fifth and sixth gear was too close I'd love for the sixth gear to be a taller highway gear price reduction yes uh, I agree we talked about that in the the video uh, I would have less electronics and less yeah uh, lower price tag on the bike when I bought it what about the T7? This is a very hard question to answer because I think the T7 is too heavy if you want to call it an, uh, yeah, a unicorn adventure bike because you will end up on trails, single track and it tips over and you will just be yeah, left alone because you can't lift it up. But if we reduce the weight of the T7 significantly, let's say 30 kilograms, it would be less comfortable on the highway like we talked about in the video because weight of the bike is of importance when riding straight ahead into the wind so i'm starting to appreciate the weight of the t7 instead of saying it's too heavy and what i do instead is when i do ride off-road or when i reach a trail i stop the bike i walk a bit i look all right is this somewhere that i want to get stuck with my t7 do I have phone reception? Uh, is there anyone around that could help me? Am I riding alone? So instead of complaining about the weight of the T7, my mindset has shifted slightly when I'm riding a heavier adventure bike. I'm more careful when I reach a trail. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's hard to explain what you need to do to the T7 to make it a unicorn. And this will quickly turn into a, a long rant if I continue. But to, to talk about certain things, it needs more aggressive tires, better suspension, and uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, it will never be a unicorn, but it will be closer to the unicorn. I hope that was something. It's, it's hard to, to uh, yeah, what is a unicorn motorcycle? It's, it's always a compromise between off-road worthiness and roadworthiness so it all depends on how you ride on a regular basis thank you very much for your question to jorge and everyone else thank you very much for watching let me know if you enjoyed this it was more detailed than my usual video but yeah inspired by ian over at big rock moto thank you for watching see you guys the next time